All right, so today we are going to talk about something that really kind of changed my video making editing life. But first, let me go get a coffee. All right, here we go. All right, so what am I talking about here? I am talking about using proxies. It literally changed my life in terms of video editing. See, nowadays, you know, mirrorless cameras and cameras in general have come a long way in terms of video. You know, most of them do shoot 4K video. DCI 4K video, you can shoot up to 60 frames per second. You can shoot really high bit rate, up to 400 megabits per second. And I'm thinking, especially in my case, about the X-T3 and then the X-T4, which can shoot in H.265 or HEVC. Now this codec is incredibly good. It is so good at compressing data and keeping the quality. You can get so much details within the H.265 codec. It's actually mind blowing. Now that sounds great. You get the same file size, but you get a lot more details within your footage, a better image quality. But the thing is that H.265 is incredibly hard for your computer to decode. Now I'm speaking about H.265, but I'm really just talking about 4K in general. Not everyone has a super powerful computer that is able to handle 4K video. So using proxies really applies to anyone wanting to shoot video in general. If you wanna speed up your workflow, using proxy is incredibly useful. So basically what a proxy is, is a lower resolution file that's gonna be used as a reference in your editing software. So in my case, I'm using Adobe Premiere. By using Adobe Media Encoder, I'm going to create a proxy. So it's gonna take my 4K file, H.265, and then create a compressed version of that, and then store it within the same folder or somewhere else. Now, while I'm editing, I'm going to be seeing the lower resolution image. So I'm gonna apply, you know, color grading, any effects, slow motion, whatever, I'm gonna be applying it to this lower resolution file. But when time comes to export the video, Adobe Premiere will actually look at the full resolution file to make the final export. So that reduces the load extremely on your computer, but it does mean you do have to add one extra step, which is creating the proxies. Now in my case, it doesn't really matter because let's say we film a Fuji guys video. I come back home, I transfer my files and it, it might be, you know, seven. I'm not gonna edit the video right away. So I transfer my files, create my project in Premiere, select all my files and then create proxies and I just let it go. And then the next morning when I come to it, I am actually ready to work and then just edit smoothly without any hiccups. Now let's go step by step on how to create your proxies. So first create your Adobe Premiere project and import your video files within the project. Now select all of the files, right click, then go to proxy and then create proxies. From there you'll have a little pop-up window. Now you have different choices. So you have format and then you have preset. Now I choose H.264 and then I choose H.264 medium resolution. Then you can choose the destination and then I would personally use next to the original media in proxy folder. Next, you just simply click on OK and then you're going to see that Adobe Media Encoder is going to be opening up and then you will see your queue of files, you know, lining up and then you will see them one by one adding in and then starting to encode these videos. Now, the first time you'll do this, you will actually need to go into your Premiere interface and then within the program window, you will need to click on the plus button and then you will need to add the toggle proxy button. So you simply click on it and then you can just drag it on just like that. And then from there, you can actually click and then toggle between the full resolution and the proxy view. Now let's have a look on how it plays back without the proxy. So this is an H.265 file, just playing back with no grading whatsoever. So you can see it's not really fluid at all. But now if I toggle to my proxy, you can see I'm going to click and then it plays just fine. 
So this little extra step really changed everything for me because when the X-T2 actually came out, I didn't have such a powerful computer and then editing these 4K files was actually a nightmare. And then now, even if I'm recording only in 4K and H.264, even if my computer can somewhat handle it and play these files somewhat smoothly, I always do proxies because it's so much easier as I put on some grading and, and different effects. It just makes the whole process so much easier. And then again, this is applicable for any footage from any camera. You can do proxies and this will smooth out your workflow so much. So hopefully that will change your life as well.